Hello, YouTube subscribers and first time visitors. I am Jane Rodriguez and I am a cryptozoology researcher, writer, as long as well as um, paranormal um, philosophy, Christianity, um, forbidden archaeology, forbidden history, and the like. And I have uh, been really getting into the race, well, the videos, the documentarian that uh, goes by the name of Al Fry, and now I have no idea if he's still alive, but he made a series of videos, um, I'm just trying to get into my email right now, he made a series of videos, let me tone down the brightness here, it was a, in the early 80s, late 70s, and every time I make a video, my eye leaks. I don't know why. But and and uh, he made them on the subject of um, strange creatures. He made one on soulmates, finding and keeping a soulmate. He made one on a thousand and one Arabian Nights. He made one on um, if hidden hidden archaeology, hidden history, the forbidden stuff that's like not that's that's um kept down in our schools and stuff that's repressed suppressed and repressed and anyway um there's just so much information that, that he presents to us the the viewer uh, you can go search him on youtube right now that it's hard to like you know get broad strokes because his documentaries or presentations are um like two hours a piece but the one on soulmates is really good too. It's just all really good information. But um, I wanted to talk about the plausibility of um, things like dragons or uh, other creatures that seem too fantastic um, to be in ex to to be able to exist. Um, he brought up a point that I, that's supported by science um, data that's been collected, and that is that uh, Mother Nature herself. Um, there'll be eggs that are laid by creatures or that exist from the creator directly himself could do could do whatever you want but they're in existence all throughout the earth hidden away in different environments oceans caves tops of mountains and sub-zero climates deserts swamps all around the globe these eggs are laying dormant waiting for just the right conditions to arise and that's when whatever's inside of them hatch now you can say that about all manner of creatures who knows you know uh, Al Fry he cited a scientist that showed that when he if this is like in the early 1900s that when he um his name was Andrew Cross uh, I think uh, but he um, put some of these rocks there were porous rocks so Porous rock would be um, that volcanic stuff, oh, pumice, or yeah, I think that's it. But uh, that's not pumice, but it's it's got all the holes in it. You know what I'm talking about, volcanic rock. But anyway, maybe it's pumice. But anyway, he soaked it in some acid and, and he froze it or something like that. It's in the, it's an Alfrey's thing, and um, these little insect insectoid creatures started coming out of the rocks. So you know. Just things like that. It's kind of weird. Um, you know, there's been just as little as the early 1930s, I think, in the in the in the um, ocean. There was uh, eggs, eel eggs. Now let me look this up. Eel eggs that were found to be six feet long. The larva for the eel six foot long larva and it was found by a Danish man I believe um, a six foot long eel larva found the trap the giant transparent ribbons of eel larva in Southeast Asia So there's that, and then there's stuff I wrote about. So obviously, they, they were saying if the larva is six feet long, then the the full-grown adult must be 100 
up to 180 feet long. Okay, now this is a scientific fact. They found it. <clears throat> Here's another thing here I'm going to say it for you. How about giant worms? Not the Mongolian death worm, a different kind of worm. Um, in 1878, Nature Magazine found um, that in the southern provinces of Brazil, there, it's called the Min Minhacoa. They call, the natives call them Minhacoa, these large worms. Um, they burrow during the rainy season away from the ocean towards dry land. Um, they uproot trees and, um, they're over, how long or how big are they? They've got face that has a snout like a pit, snout like a pig, body has scales like armored ar armadillo. Um, it's longer than a man. Let's see now. Let's, let's look this up. Large Brazilian worm that uproots. This is how I find stuff. I just simply Google it. No, it's not gonna put. I'll have to find it. But anyway, it's there. Um, yeah, it was Danish biologist Anton Brun, by the way, who found the six-foot-long eel larva. Um, okay, how about dinosaurs? Dinosaurs is another example of an egg that would, um, that there, there have been cited modern day dinosaurs. Um, people, I know my, my mentor and cohort, JC Johnson, um, he had followed, had many reports and follow up visits in the Four Corners region of, um, many T-Rexes that people saw, that they swore up and down they saw, reputable sources that they saw many T-Rexes, okay? I know it sounds crazy, but, um, we're on the topic of just the right conditions, dormant eggs and such. Um, well, um, there was a priest, Harold or Carol Wilkins, he was a French priest, um, French Canadian. He saw Arctic footprints in the snow in 1905. Um, and the creature, when they actually saw it, it was 50 feet long. It was like a brontosaurus type thing. So he saw it, then the next day, um, he went and he contacted um, media uh, and scientists came and they went and looked the very next day and they found the tracks of this creature and they followed it and they saw the 50 foot long dinosaur, okay? And the dinosaur had like the spiky scaly kind of um, hair on it, thick, you know, keratin, you know, like how my hair is like real skinny, but it's thick it was thick coarse spiky hair um so that happened i believe that happened you know we have reason to believe that that happened we believe other things in history uh, with less evidence than that uh, so my point is is that to those who scoff at the idea that uh, these things simply could not exist because it's just oh, well everybody knows that dinosaurs were you know, made extinct, and uh, that's just not true. Uh, it's the possibility of dormant eggs that have um, lived since the beginning of time, dormant in 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 areas that uh, simply have not had the right kind of environmental factors necessary to, to make the thing inside of it hatch. So. Resurrection of Dormant Eggs. This is an article in Yale in Connecticut. Um, so see, just like that man had to dip the rocks in a, a certain acid and freeze it, you know, or not even freeze it, just make it a certain temperature. Uh, yeah, oh, below freezing, whatever. Um, these scientists using resurrection technology, which is simply... I'm not sure what that is. What they were doing was they were recreating the environment necessary to um, uh, she hatched long-lived dormant Daphnia eggs found from multiple time periods and tracked her sensitivity to low and high concentrations from metals through time. So this is a known accepted scientific fact. It's called resurrection technology where they take things that they know are dormant uh, eggs and they go ahead and they do what they need to do. 
to hatch them. So why couldn't there be other species, you know? Isn't that just hubris and stupidity to think that we know everything? Every kind of animal and creature that's out there? No, of course we don't. So that's all I wanted to um, to say and, and kind of get in the consciousness of the viewers here. Uh, other than that, I'll... I'll I still plan on, I'm going out with Linda Godfrey soon, I still plan on um, collaborating with Brendan Sowen, that will happen, um, besides that, you know, I'll, I'll keep everybody posted, everybody knows that um, I'm going through, through some changes in my personal life, so that, you know, certainly uh, has put some things on hold, for at least for now, temporarily, but I'm going to, I'm eager to get back into the full swing of things, and I will, and this is Jane Rodriguez, signing off.